In this exercise, we will be making selections at the Refine Edge tool and making extractions from one file to another so as to make it look as if one photo belonged uh, on top of a background all along. I'm going to use the kitty.jpg file, right clicking on the assignment, saving that link. I'm going to save, I have a folder in my desktop and I'm going to save that there. Uh, the next three files, the PS11, Lake, Snow, and Trees, those are backgrounds. I'm going to go ahead and download one of these. You can download whichever one you want. You can download all three, try them out. I'm going to use the snow, so I'm right-clicking on snow, saving the link. And now let's go back to Photoshop, I'm going to File and Open. Here's the two files that I just downloaded. I'm going to download the snow first. This file eventually is going to be the uh, background for the finished product where this is the background, the lady with the cat will be up in front. I'm going to go to the view menu and uh, make this a little bit larger. I'm going to tell it to fit on screen. The shortcut for that is control zero. So now I get a larger image. With this image still open, I'll go to file and open and select the uh, kitty. I will also go to the view menu and tell it to fit on the screen. So I get a little bit better, closer look. The object is to make a selection so that we outline the body and uh, of the lady and the cat so that we can cut it out and uh, put it on top of the snow. Notice how I'm switching between documents by clicking on the tabs. You could also go to the window menu and uh, well, maybe you can't see it at the very bottom. I see that there are two files and I can switch between them. The work will be done in the kitty. There's multiple selection tools that we could use. Uh, the best option for this though will be the quick selection tool. That's the fourth from the top. Looks like a brush with uh, a dotted line around it. I'm going to uh, click on that. My uh, properties bar on top tells me something about it. it tells me that right now we're going to be adding a new selection uh, it will switch eventually to add to selection so it will continue to grow if we ever go over the lines then we can use subtract from selection but new selection is good the brush currently is 30 pixels you can see the uh, the little cross at the center of the of the circle is the actual pixel that we will be uh, sampling the circle represents the 30 pixels that are go around. 30 may be a little bit too much for this image, so I'm going to click on the arrow next to the number 30 and reduce the size somewhere around 15 or so. Once that's set, I can uh, click somewhere else in the image and start to make my selection by clicking and holding down the left mouse button and dragging down. Notice the marching ants up here. That's the selection that's currently being made. I'm just clicking and dragging straight down. I'm not trying to follow any of the contours or the shapes of the hat or the cat or the lady. I'm going to make sure that I have the cat's eye selected, clicking and dragging a little bit around there. I think that I can select a little bit more of this hat, but I don't feel comfortable with the 15. I'm going to take this down even lower somewhere around five and then just clicking in small just short clicks I selected too much it selected way out on the side I can either press control Z uh, to undo the quick selection just go back one step and see if it will allow me to make a good selection so that's gonna be kinda hard I'm going to let the uh, refine edge tool help me out there I'm going to undo that last click and just be happy with what I got. I think I also need the cat's nose. And uh, so now we have our, our quick selection made. I'm going to click the Refine Edge button. I'll move this box out of the way so that we can see the image a little bit better. You can see our selection. It's, uh, it's fairly good. We can see that the uh, fur coat though and the cat's fur coat is going to be a little bit difficult because of all that wispy hair. I'm going to take a better look since it, she is wearing a white coat, the cat has some white, and the background is currently white. Change my view 
on the view mode, click on that down arrow next to the thumbnail. Uh, we could uh, probably go with uh, black background or maybe the red background. It's a little bit striking here. Now we can appreciate the uh, fur outline a little bit better. You can see that actually this is a pretty good job. There's just a couple of places that need to be refined. I'm not going to click OK just yet. I'm clicking outside of that box so that it accepts the red view. And I'm going to turn on the smart radius on the edge detection. Currently it's set at zero pixels, so we need to increase this a little bit so it can go beyond the borders. And you can tell how it's starting to uh, work its magic on the uh, hat, the cat. The hair is a little bit better. If I increase it a little bit more, then the uh, hair from under the hat appears. The cat is a little bit more clear and the fur coat also strikes out a little bit better. I'll stop somewhere around 25 or so. These numbers really don't mean much. It all depends on the image. It depends on uh, how uh, Photoshop looks at uh, each particular case. Uh, so it's never really a, a matter of putting in the number 8.4 or 25 or anything like that. You're going to have to figure it out every time. We also have a chance to refine it by uh, clicking on the Refine Radius tool and uh, you can either change the size or keep the same just to try it out. All this is, if you click and drag around the edges, that may be a problem, especially where there's little wisps of hair. Same thing with the cat. It just uh, refines the tuning of that selection. So now because there's some colors that are starting to mix in, I'm going to click on the decontaminate colors. Make sure that I expand that a little bit. And I'll click uh, on Output 2. I'm going to output this not to a new document, but to a new layer with Layer Mask. And click OK. The new layer appears in the Layers tab on the side. You can see the original image is in the background still. But now we have a background copy with a mask. Now, remember the snow. What we can do is right click on the background copy and uh, tell it to duplicate. Duplicate this layer. Click on that. Currently, it tells me that the destination is PS11 Kitty. That's the file that's already open. So we don't want it there. We want to select the snow or whichever file you downloaded. I'll click OK and then switch to the snow. Photoshop's made a copy of not only the image but also the uh, mask, the background copy that came from the other file. I'll click and select my move tool, that's the tool at the very top, and uh, move her to the corner, left corner here. I don't want to just leave her with the, a cut elbow. She would look something like that. So I'll just cradle her in the corner and uh, at least we now have the appearance of maybe this lady and her cat posing in front of a snowy scene.